and a very good good after morning. This is Craig Brown. There are many pressing issues in the world today. Which, for instance, is our finest post-war vegetable? Some of us may think it is the carrot. Others may well think it is the cauliflower. Perhaps even the rhododendron. We all of us, young and old, are entitled to our opinion. But at the same time, we must learn to sort out our differences in a spirit of mutual cooperation. How do the fruit and veg of today match up to the past grades? Is the mange too better than the radish? And which are the best fruit and veg of the past half century? To discuss these and other matters, I'm joined by our high-powered panel, who between them have managed to whittle the original long list of 100 top fruit and veg to this, the 12 all-time greatest fruit and veg since 1945. So, at number 12, Michael Portillo, comes the chipolata. This might surprise some people. Why the chipolata? Hmm. Well, Melvin, although it's not, strictly speaking, a fruit, or indeed a vegetable, the chipolata was chosen by our panel for its enduring appeal to all ages, its versatility and sheer popularity, and to my mind it's proved itself easily the equal of the carrot, and for that achievement alone it deserves its place on our list. Fair enough. That's excellent news for the chipolata. Number 11, Antonia Byte, you've picked a well-known yellow fruit. Yes, Melvin, we've plumped for the lemon. Along with the banana, it's one of only two yellow fruit to be included on the long list. But the lemon has proved itself indispensable with fish, uh, as well as lending much-needed zest to household cleaning products. In a manner that is, to my mind, quite extraordinary, the lemon has consistently proved itself one of the most influential small fruits of the post-war era. Uh, one can detect its profound influence in many up-and-coming young fruits, uh, such as the pawpaw and, and the mango, for instance. So no real surprises there, then. And so now we're into the top ten. Michael. Well, straight in at number ten is the Brussels sprout. Now, as you know, Melvin, this small green vegetable is no stranger to controversy. Some critics argue that it is merely an aspirant cabbage, others that it is liable to induce intractable wind problems. But to my mind, this is a vegetable that is really, truly breathtaking. It's worth pointing out, incidentally, that this is one of only three major vegetables on the long list to be formed of two entirely separate words, sprout and Brussels, though not always necessarily in that order. Excellent. I've always been a big fan of the Brussels sprout. And so to Brian Sewell for our number nine choice. Brian? Well, brought up in ditches and on salt marshes, celery has a coarse texture and acrid taste, but nevertheless it earns its place on our list for its consistent ability to surprise and its internationally acknowledged brilliance as a soup. Thank you, Brian. Well, we'll be back with the rest of our greatest post-war fruit and veg in just a few minutes. Ten things you didn't know about Tuscany. Tuscany derives its name from Tucson, Arizona. Or vegetable, the battle rages. But we should not allow this ongoing controversy to obscure the very real achievements of the tomato. Like celery, it has established itself as a world-beating soup. But it's notably less stringy than its rival. And that's why you've chosen it, Michael Portillo, as your eighth greatest fruit and veg of all time. Yeah, straight off the vine, it's perfectly spherical, Melvin. Yet, when you cup it, it reinvents itself in equally perfect circular slices. To this extent, the tomato continues, in my mind, to justify its claim to be our leading contemporary postmodern vegetable slash fruit. Thank you. Number seven, Antonia Bide. We have something of a surprise choice, I believe. Arguably more of a popular word-based board game than a vegetable, Scrabble nevertheless earns its place on our list because, like vegetables, it is most often found on tables and people gather around it. So, in a curious sense, it is both absolutely right, yet at the same time absolutely wrong, to classify Scrabble as a vegetable. And let's not forget, Melvin, that it's the only vegetable or fruit on our list to be spelt with a capital letter. A controversial choice there from A.S. Byatt. Michael Portillo, what's at number six? The poor Paul, Melvin. The poor Paul has changed so much about the way we eat food that it's almost impossible to imagine a post-war world without it. It burst onto the central London sweet trolley in 1981 and soon established itself as a vibrant new voice in post-colonial fruit-based puddings. Incidentally, the notoriously reclusive poor Paul occasionally shelters under the pseudonym of papaya. Fascinating. And so now we're into the top five greatest post-war fruit and veg. 
Brian Sewell, what's at number five? Well, it has to be baked beans, Melvin. Some people might wonder what on earth there is left to say about the best-selling vegetable in the country. Yet the baked bean continues to tantalise, delight, and revitalise all those who consume it. Oh, quite, quite. I, I couldn't agree more. Antonia, by? Um, some people will no doubt complain that being a child-friendly vegetable is easy. It isn't. Children will abandon the Brussels sprout or the radish after only a couple of bites, but they will continue to immerse themselves in baked beans for hour after hour. I, I know that some of its critics complain that the baked bean is a pre-cooked vegetable and others argue that the tomato should be given the credit for providing the distinctive sauce, yet the pre-eminence of the baked beans remains for me unquestionable, unquestionable. I always enjoy the newscast of breakfast, very much so. Well, we're now into the final four greatest fruit and veg since the war. And at number four, Michael Portillo, we have a Louis XV escritoire. A controversial choice? Hmm. I mean, the vast majority of the panel agreed that a Louis XV escritoire was a table. But few wouldn't go so far as to confirm it as a veg table. <laughs> Either way, it fully deserves its place on our list. Oh, quite, quite. After all, what other vegetable would be so perfect for writing a letter on? Certainly not the cauliflower, much too bumpy, nor the humble pea, far too small, unreliable, desperately squishy. <laughs> Indeed. And at number three, Brian Sewell, comes something of a dangerous choice. Yes, the mushroom, Melvin. The mushroom can be, it is now, generally agreed, immensely poisonous, yet its reputation as the quiet modern genius of the kitchen table rests very securely. Oh, yes, quite, quite. Over 25... And right up there at number two, Brian Sewell, comes the pomegranate. Native to southwest Asia, but cultivated widely in tropical and subtropical areas, the pomegranate, or pomegranate, remains essential to our understanding of who we are, where we started from, and where we're going. Though, for me, it still has not come up with a satisfactory answer as to how we got here, or indeed, what time it is. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And so, finally, we arrive at the highly sought-after number one spot. Michael Portillo, perhaps you could tell us what your panel has chosen as the number one fruit and vegetable since the war. <laughs> well, after much heated discussion and stiff competition, the panel finally awarded the title of the greatest of all post-war fruit and veg to the beetroot. Raw, it's rock hard, yet boiled or baked, it's strangely soft, even pliant. And for that alone, it deserves its place. Yes, and who can forget its mysterious colour? Frankly, I agree with Christopher Ricks when he says that it's the Bob Dylan of the root vegetable world with all its quite extraordinary and, in a sense, endless labyrinthine multiplicity. And so the beetroot it is. The beetroot has been officially chosen as the greatest post-war fruit and veg. Its prize is to be flown over to South Africa, served up in a mixed salad with raw onion and feta cheese to the legendary award winner Nelson Mandela in a special ceremony. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my panellists, Michael Portillo, Antonia Byatt and Brian Sewell.